Welcome back to Ghana Money King Kong Hall. Give you tips, tools, and deals for you to be able to stay safe and save money in Ghana. I hope you're enjoying your holiday season. We've come a long way. We thank you very much for joining us, for supporting us, for following us, subscribing, sharing our YouTube videos, being on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all the various channels, joining our various communities, Africa Bank Foundation, coming to Ghana. We love you. We thank you for whatever you've done, supporting and, and just following, just keeping the conversation going. I just want us to discuss something going into 2019 and beyond. And it is something that I want us to go to my fellow Ghanaians who are in Ghana currently with us. I just want us to speak to um, African-Americans who want to come to Ghana or those who are planning or those who are not, who are not certain, who, do, who don't know what they want to do whether they want to come back to Africa or Ghana. I also want this message to go to Ghanaians who are abroad, who have been in, uh, outside the country for a very long time and who don't, who don't believe in the system coming back or who are, not, who are not sure, who don't know what to do. There's so many people around the world who have interest in Ghana and, and there's so much that they're thinking about, they're considering. So this message, this video basically is for us to look beyond 2019 and going forward and the first thing that i want to talk about is belief we need to start believing in ghana and africa we need to start understanding that that is the all that we have you may be somewhere you 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 might have ha had a life somewhere you may be enjoying yourself somewhere you, you may be confused somewhere wherever you live in this part of the world you need to start believing in Africa. I need to start believing in Ghana if you come to Ghana or if, you, if, if that is where you come from. If you're a Nigerian, you need to start believing in Nigeria. If you're in South, if you're South Africa, if you're a Kenyan, you need to start believing in Africa because that is the starting point. There is a whole lot of videos and information and chats and comments that's going on on YouTube and it's going on across the social media. And sometimes... I, I, I'm blessed. I feel blessed that I haven't been following some of these um, pessimistic views or some of these people who come on, on, on social media and all they want to talk about is the negatives of Africa. All they want to talk about is the, is the wrongs that's going on in Africa without providing us with any solutions or without even giving us an examples of what they have done themselves. That is my problem. Because it's so easy. Everybody knows the problems in Africa. You, if, I, if, I, if I sit on this, on this video and I start talking about the wrongs that I've seen in Ghana currently, I mean, this video can, even six months will not even be enough for us to even talk about the problems in just a simple Ghana. So there is no need people going about ranting about issues and problems in Africa and in Ghana and the things that they saw or the things that they've seen coming from corruption, light that's not working, economic and incompetence, all those issues we know. We want to rise beyond that issues. We want solutions. We want practical solutions that can work in Africa and in Ghana currently. And that is what I feel we need to start thinking about. And the only thing that we can do is we need to start believing in Africa. So belief is number one. Number two, unity. If I say unity, it is a unity on a different level. It is a unity that has never happened before. It is unity that we have never considered for a very long time as black people and as people with African descent. So it doesn't matter where you come from. As long as you are black, you need to remember that you come from Africa. I know that a lot of people have got different, different opinions and I understand we need to stop believing that we all come from a particular seed. And so if we need to, if we want to do something together, the first thing is unity. And, and it is unity where you have to see that that particular person belongs to your kind. Just, we're not going to mention, just look at other races and look at if they are somewhere. If you see a Chinese person in any part of the world, they come from China and they work together as Chinese. If you see an European, any part of the world, he or she is an European and they work together going back as Europeans. 
if you see an Indian, any part, any, any race in this world, they work together. But when it comes to black people, when it comes to people of African descent, then isolation comes in. So you see, black people in South Africa, they think differently because of what they've been exposed to. Black people in the rest of Africa, they think differently. Black people in America, in the United States, they have different opinions. Black people in Caribbean, they think differently. Everybody is trying to work, but it is not together. We are not depending on each other. We are not doing things that will benefit each other. We are not coordinating. And that's that type of unity I'm talking about. If we don't start seeing ourselves as brothers, if we don't start seeing ourselves as one people, if we don't start seeing ourselves as people who can work together, who can come up with the same objectives, who can come up with the same mindset, who can come up with the same coordination to achieve a specific goal, we can't work, we cannot move on in 2019 and beyond. So unity is very, very key. The third thing that I want to talk about is trust and trust on a different level. I mean, when I say trust, I mean trust such that you don't, you haven't seen the person before, but you, you know that you want to, you want to work with the person. You, you believe that this person, it's good. You have a feeling and inclination to him that, yes, I want to give this person a chance. And that is what we are lacking. We don't trust ourselves. We don't trust our neighbors. We don't trust our brothers. We don't trust our family. And maybe there's a reason. Maybe because of history. Maybe because of what somebody's done to you. Maybe because of what you've heard. But I tell you what. If we don't start working on our trust system. We don't start looking up how best we can trust people we want to work with. Then we, have, we don't even need to start. There's, there's an element of risk in any simple venture. Any simple move any simple business, and any other thing that you want to do. But if you, if you look at this, every time an African person, every time somebody of an African descent, a black person, is trying to bring out something, you realize that his or her own people don't trust him initially. If he was from another race, it would have been easier for them to even get on board. But it, it's very difficult for black people to trust black people. It's very difficult for Africans to trust Africans. And it's not a coincidence that a lot of foreign businesses are doing very well in Africa. And we keep complaining about the Chinese. If we complain about other race who are in Africa and who are working, it's because we don't trust our kind. And that is the problem. If I start something now, I want to organize something at the moment. I am trying to pull us together. But I know, and I know for sure, that some people are thinking that this guy is a scum. This guy is wrong. That is the problem we have. And so you see people who are always passionate, who want to do something to help Africa. But if they don't get the, the, the support, if they don't get the trust that he or she needs from the wider community of black people, it's not going to grow. I may I understand. You might have been scammed before. You might have heard the stories of, of, of a lot of people going through situations whereby their money, they've lost money because they followed somebody in Africa, they followed an email. That, that is that, that is real. But this does not mean everybody in Africa is the same. We need to stop generalizing the issues in Africa. We need to stop generalizing people in Africa such that every single bad experiences become a rule that is not helping our cause that is not helping our cause and so if you are listening to me today I am pleading I am calling you out I am saying that in 2019 let us rise above on trust let's just rise above not linking up if you see somebody online, if you feel, if you feel you, you are touched by a message online or somebody who is trying to support, just link up with the person. There are ways that you can go through for you to be able to understand if this person is real. Through WhatsApp, try and get a video call. 
Try and see if you can speak to the person random times. Try and see if you can get hold of this person, whether it's email, whether it's telephone, whether it's online, whether it's video calling. You need to be able to have a special interaction with this person so that you can trust. You need to start building it. You, just, you, you don't have to stop just because you feel that, oh, this person, I don't trust him without any factual information. And so trust is the way forward. It is the way that you will be able to start establishing businesses where, with people who are ready to do business with you in Africa. Getting involved. It's number four and it's the thing that I want to talk about. You need to get involved instead of just sitting back and complaining. It is too much. The complaints are too much. The complaints and the talk about issues that are wrong are too much. If you don't want to come back to Ghana, again, I think it is proper and it's ideal for you to possibly maybe leave Ghana issues for Ghanaians to sort it out. If you're never going to come to Africa, I think there is a need for you to just forget about it and keep quiet for people who want to be able to go to Africa and who want to do something for Africa to be able to address it. Because until you get involved, until you become part of the system to try and influence it with what you think and what you know is right, I don't think you have any issues to be worried about. Because look at this. We, 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 we've... We all know the issues. We all understand the problems in Africa. We all know that things are going on that are not right. But how do you expect this to be sorted out? How do you expect it to, to, to solve? Are you, are you waiting for somebody? Why are we constantly always pointing fingers to people? Why are we constantly waiting for others to do the right thing? When we know, we know what is right. If we don't come and try and get into the system, if we don't come and join the struggle, if we don't come and to provide our solutions, how are we going to get the issues sorted out? So I don't know the industry that you are in. You Are you in the medical field? Have you realized that the health system is not good? What can you do about it? Are you an IT person? What can you do about it in Africa with your skills? What can you use your teaching education qualification to help? What can you use your, your any type of skill and education level? Whatever you have that you feel could be beneficial until you bring that to Africa, until you bring that to Ghana to be able to try and influence it, nothing is going to be done. If you are sitting out there thinking that you are waiting for the Ghanaian government, you are waiting for the politicians, you are waiting for us or people who are in Ghana to close and solve these issues before you come, it is never going to get. It is never going to happen because we need people who feel they can fix the system to be there to fix it. If you have identified something that is not being fixed, why do you think the people who are there who have not fixed, they can fix it? If, if they knew or if they can do it, you think they wouldn't have done it? I think it is about time people act and stop talking. It's about time people stop stop wasting time ranting and acting. And that's what some of us are doing. We are not just talking, we are acting. We are on the ground. We are doing things that we feel it is right. We are doing things that we feel it could, it could help. And if it's just about raising the awareness, if it's just about being in the public domain, trying to get people together, trying to galvanize people, trying to organize the youth, trying to build and empower the youth to be able to work, that is also an act that you can do instead of just wasting time complaining. The next bit that I want to talk about is competent people who are spread across the country, in Ghana, overseas, all over the world. And who have just relaxed, thinking that issues is going to be solved in Ghana. Or they are going to be solved in Africa. I mean, competent people. And when I say competency, I mean people who have got skills and who have got background to change things. You know yourself. You know whether you're competent or not. This is, this is something that I cannot help. I know I can't. I know I'm competent. I know my skills, I know what I've done, and I know what I can do. 
and now know where my competency level is. And so based on that, I'm doing to the max what I can do to help Ghana. And that is me. I don't know about you. So let's just look at something called the Dan Kruger effect. Okay. It's, 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 it's a simple, it's a simple phenomenon. And I think it's a simple ideology whereby competent people have just left the system for incompetent people to maneuver through thinking that they can do the right thing. And so at the moment, this is what I've come to understand that there are so much incompetency and so much incompetent leadership and incompetent people in positions all over Africa. Okay, so if I take the Ghana, yes, there are incompetency handling affairs. There's a lot of people who are handling things that are, they are incompetent to do. And they've gotten there because of something, because of the affiliation or whatever it is. But they are in positions and they are doing what they want to do. The fact is, they don't even know that they are incompetent. So they are so much incompetent that they cannot even recognize their own incompetency. Because they don't have the skills and ability to recognize their incompetency. I hope it's not confusing. So these incompetent people are not able to recognize their incompetency because they are incompetent. The problem is people who are competent have just left the system for them to operate because they have also not been thinking about their own competency. They have run down their competency level. They have actually relaxed thinking that these incompetent people are competent enough to do the things that they need to do. And so we are left with this vicious cycle whereby incompetency is running a system, but they cannot fix it because they are incompetent. But the competent people who should put themselves up for positions, who should put themselves up to political power, who should put themselves up to leadership and get involved in things, have also relaxed thinking that they are competent people at the helm of affairs. That is not going to fix. And so if you're competent, if you feel you know the right thing, if you sit at the back of the TV screen, if you're watching your screens, if you're seeing what's going on in Ghana, if you're listening to leaders, if you're seeing publications and statements that's coming out of our leaders and our people and our directors and managers and people who are managing things in Ghana, and you can actually sense that these guys are incompetent. That's what I'm talking about. Because sometimes it is so clear on some of these things that's come out. Sometimes it's so clear that the things that you read and the things that you actually, you get out of these people and you realize that no, these people are not ready. These guys cannot manage. But why are they managing? It's because they are the only people who are putting themselves up for positions. It's because they are the people who are making themselves available to lead. And if you are competent and you don't make yourself available, what's going to happen is you're going to get people who are incompetent to lead you. And that is what is happening in Africa and in Ghana. People are managing because they are forcing themselves to be in positions. And the competent people are relaxing, thinking that he's going to his job, she's working in a bank, she's working in the private sector, but forgetting that the country is going to be run by somebody. It starts from a very low key. It starts from the district and local authorities. It starts from a position whereby people who just get into positions from the, from the roots, they start from the beginning. They build themselves up. They follow the truth and they get into positions and then they'll come and rule you. No disrespect to anybody. No politics. But this is a fact that we need to start addressing and we need to see that we need to start putting ourselves up for things that we can do if we are competent. In all, what I want to say is it has, there has never been a better time than this. I, I, I have a feeling that inwardly people are also feeling it. There's a lot that's coming through us. This is coming through our hearts. This is coming through our being. We, we are seeing the need to, to come back together as Africans, as black people, to work on the continent, to work in Ghana, to start spreading the message, to start coordinating, to start getting involved in things.
Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. Thank you for, for following us throughout the 2018. Let's just keep the conversation going throughout 2019 and beyond. And I hope that we're going to get a lovely time, lovely year, and we're going to see ourselves achieving in the near future. Blessed. Bye.